It's turkey time. Welcome to One Good Thing, the podcast that tries to find the actual tone in a wash of misplaced music, rambling dialogue, and abusing disabled people? I'm Paul Salt. I'm a one-time offer. Today we'll be discussing Zhizhli. What? My name is G- pronounced Zhili. It rhymes with really. Uh, Martin Brest's unexpectedly final film. <laughs> um, his suddenly final film. <laughs> <laughs> Inconspicuously final film. <laughs> Yes, this week's episode comes to us from the dark and hateful mind corners of Avoid Being Hated, at Avoid Being Hated. You've already done an episode on how to avoid being hated by your podcast editor. Since you've dredged this fat and sweaty mess from the rivers of hell, we can only assume it doesn't have anything to do with us. This also marks uh, some, something of a special occasion for us OGT boys and you OGT fans and girls. This marks the third time that Ben Affleck and Christopher Walken have appeared in an OGT film, oh. making them our very first OGT three men. Oh, free to a man, free in a bush, free, free, yo. Films a shit, mate. You don't want to know what happens the next level up, guys. <laughs> Critics reacted to this movie very much like the prospect of cutting a thumb off of a trusting man. Joe Morgenstern at the Wall Street Journal said, More stupefying follies may come, but it's impossible to imagine how they'll beat this one for idiocy, fatuousness, or pretension. He's a serious man, Joe Morgenstern. Yeah, dark tidings. He earns that part of his name, Morgan. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, Dana Stevens over at the New York Times uh, said, Buried in the slow, talky inanities that the two stars exchange are some potentially interesting ideas about female sexual self-assertion and male surrender, but neither the actors nor the filmmakers have any notion about how to explore them. Swinging a massive hammer from the top of a very (laughs) tall building into our welcoming faces, I think, was the... That was the method of delivering messages about sexual self-assertion and male surrender. Yes. But they don't know how to explore it as well as I do. (laughs) You've never seen a man surrender. Until <laughs> you've spent a weekend of my <laughs> Um The public reaction was probably equally as spiteful. Robo Jesus 777 over IMDb. He is a harsh one to please. Oh, God, he's tough. Mm. He's only like two films. And they were. <laughs> Paul, yeah, I believe you know what they were. Oh, yes. Uh, Notting Hill was yes. the first one. Loved it. And the second one was um, God's Not Dead 2. Ooh. Yeah. Controversial for Robo Jesus. Yeah, but he. Uh, he Loves it with all his heart. He's a very sincere man. Yeah. He said, those five dollars could have bought me some chicken McNuggets. Oh, that's... <laughs> how, ma- how many would five dollars have gotten you, I wonder? <laughs> and how long would you spend eating them compared to sort of taking in j- jiggly? Well, <laughs> you know how cheap uh, fast food is nowadays. I do. Um, I really do. And... Um, who, who? What was his name? Sorry, good sir. Uh, I believe it was Robo Jesus seven seven seven. Oh, Robo Jesus seven 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 takes his time over chicken nuggets. Oh yeah, he does. Do you know what I heard? I heard it takes him three days. <laughs> and on the third day, he rises from his seat to recycle the food after chomping on a wet chicken nugget like a toffee <laughs> for three days. For three solid days. He then subsumes the, uh, the scrapings of energy from this measly <laughs> morsel. <laughs> Just enough to stagger from the seat to the recycling bin, which he throws himself into. Paul, you stone-cold dyke. Oh, hello. What is one good thing about gaggly? Really, it rhymes with really. Ooh, the 90s fashion of the uh, 2003 masterpiece. Googly. Julia. Yeah, absolutely. I believe actually 90s fashion really hit its peak in 2003. That was really the year when all the sort of waist highs and mm-hmm. tied off t-shirts and... Uh, big old baggy pants. Big old baggy pants. Yeah. Um, you know, they're so big, you could almost use them as a parachute if you had a mind to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it really, it really did hit its peak. Kind of like... Um, Leather jackets. <laughs> kind, kind of like that fairground ride where you... Uh, where you sort of strap yourself into a harness and run as fast as you can in the opposite direction until it <laughs> springs you back violently. 
<laughs> I love those rides. Yeah. So, Paul, what exactly happens? What what is Gagli- Giggly? I've never heard of this movie. What what is it? What does it entail? Well, Gallagher the movie. Yeah. Has an OGT style uh, narration opening. Uh-huh. The only difference is, and props to it, it's not oh. telling us about the plot. Ah, oh, lovely. Um, which was refreshing. Oh, very refreshing. Like a nice bath. Yes. Um, after about five seconds of this delicious uh, bath in blackness, yes. um, the screen comes alive with many moving images, uh, one of which is Ben Affleck God. with a hairdo. Um, wow. Looking into the camera. Bear-do. Bear-do's, bruv. <laughs> he, uh, he's basically talking to camera and going... That this is that this is how the fucking world works, yeah, and uh, not in that uh, accent. He's he's given us a valuable life lesson with uh, extra attitude for only ninety nine cents. Love it. And um, it pans out he's talking to uh, somebody who he's forced into a tumble dryer. What? That's not a nice guy thing to do. No, it's not he... a nice guy thing. Wait, to do. wait, wait, wait. Sorry, Ben Affleck, our hero, right? Ben Affleck, the hero of the film. But he's put a man in a. Was it a bad man? It's a poor man, and is that? Also the they're same thing as worse bad? than bad oh they're actually worse it. than bad they're disgusting wow so he he is uh not extorting this man he's just chasing up he's pursuing a claim against oh. him for money he gets half the money back uh, because he's he's pretty good as a gangster but he's yeah. not he's not all the way good no i mean 50 percent return isn't great on any sort of loan no and if anything i'd say that ben affleck's the reason we're, we were in the financial situation we're in right now him personally, not his character in Gigi, in Gigi, um, just actually Ben Affleck. It's true, actually. If you look at his credits on IMDb, it's um, it's the town, live by night, the big short. Not he wasn't in it; he caused it. <laughs> He's the genesis, <laughs> inspired <Yeah>. by <laughs> Ben Affleck and his dark works. <laughs> Af- Miss- Monsieur Affleck then leaves with half the money and goes and meets up with his boss, Louis. 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 Unsurprisingly. Or surprisingly, is not happy with Gorgly, yeah, the uh, gangster, because he, as as we've just discussed, he's he's done a, he's done a half his job. He did gangs wrong, and he didn't even hurt the bloke. No, okay. no, he didn't even hurt him. He put him in the tumble dryer, and then he let him out again. Yeah, it's like, oh, even he was like, well, what did you put me in there for? Yeah, I mean, Jesus, half measures much. He's like, yo, yo, I put some fucking fabric conditioner in your jacket. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I'm itchy now. I wish I'd paid the money. My psoriasis. Ah. <laughs> You're a brilliant gangster after all. Here's all the money. It's all right. It's non-bio. <laughs> Just for you, buddy. So so that, that that was all a dream. He didn't get all the money. He only got 50%. <laughs> so Lewis sends him home um, after a bit of a dressing down. Yeah. And a new plan. Yes, a new a job. Mm-hmm. Because basically mm-hmm. what's happening is that we've got a guy who needs some kidnapping. Yeah. He needs um, about two pounds of kidnapping. Yeah. Um, delivered to his doorstep. Yeah. So, and this guy just happens to be um, a man with a learning disability. Yes. Oh boy. Uh, named Brian. Played by Justin Bartha. Justin Bartha, um, who, uh, who perennially left on the roof guy from The Hangover. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, he goes and picks up the guy. Yes. Um, Brian, convincing him that he is taking him to the Baywatch, which is where yes. he wants to go. Yes. Um, it's not, he doesn't, he's not really interested in what that is because Lewis doesn't really care about, uh, Brian just wants him. Yeah. Or, or, or Giggly. Yeah. It's, what's his first name? Larry. Larry. Larry Gogly. Yeah. Larry Godly. Larry Google, creator of Google. <laughs> Larry Lamb Google. Um, he's going to take him. He's just going to take him. Yeah. Like, he doesn't really care about his likes and interests. He yeah. just wants him taken as quietly as possible. So he tells him, yeah, sure. I'll take you to the Baywatch. Before faking a call on a walkie-talkie, which is actually Torch. a flashlight, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> saying that the Baywatch is closed and that it'll have to go another day. Yeah, so uh, they go back to his flat. Yeah, Brian consents to go back to his flat. Yeah, um, so they have uh, some sort of uh, button-down hijinks where they have some oh, confusion and, and, and missteps and things like that. It's, it's off it's, the hook. It's then very down. funny to watch Ben Affleck uh, shout at a person with a learning disability. <laughs> then Jennifer the door. Lopez knocks Jennifer on the door. Lopez, yes, mm. she has a midriff. Oh, she does. She brought that with her forever on show. Um, yes. And in case you forget, she has it. Yes, well on her, well on her. She well uh, worked hard for it, I imagine. Oh god. Yeah. Um, not she didn't spend five dollars on chicken McNuggets. No, she certainly didn't. She Just... ordered them. She paid the five dollars. She ordered them, and then she ran as far as she could <laughs> away from them. <laughs> 
<laughs> that adrenaline just kicked in. Uh, the <laughs> old skills it. never leave you. You need it. Just yeah, it really fires you up. It's better than a barking dog. And you, and you can you can tell that because she's glowing in the in this oh, film. God, she yeah. really is ra- radiating um, non chicken nuggets in the face. <laughs> Shit, um, elf. She worms away into Ben Affleck's heart uh, flat and <laughs> says, I need to use the phone. And he's like, you can't. Oh, let me use the phone. No, you can't. Let me use the phone. All right, then. Have you noticed how hot I am? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's on, true. Then. I've got a big old secret, you know, kidnapping thing going yeah, on. I'm but... in the middle of a kidnapping, but look at that midriff. Yeah. If you, I mean, ugh. I'll lick that midriff. Don't think I won't lick that midriff. <laughs> yeah, she seems like a really nice person who's not yeah. able to quite get someone on the phone. Um, and then, you know, on her way out, just happens to mention that he's a fucking idiot and an amateur and he should be doing his job properly. Yes. Surprise! Oh, bum. She's actually a contracted... Lady. F- thing. Yes. Protagonist. A contracted protagonist. That's exactly yes. it. But yeah, they're a bit of an odd couple, yeah. basically. She likes reading. He doesn't. Yeah. There's at least two other differences between them. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. yeah. So One of which is uh-huh. he wants to have sex with her. Yes. Well, and- there's one... Actually, the problem is that there is a similarity they have in as much as he wants to have sex with a beautiful woman, and so does she. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is, in fact, one of those... <laughs> lesbians. I've heard of lesbians. Yeah, you know the lesbians. Yeah, yeah. Jim Davidson uh, speaks about them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He prepared us for this. He did. Yes. Uh, as as and also the rest of the modern world. If you buy a copy of Gigli, um Jim Davidson comes to your house to personally introduce it. <laughs> it's monstrous. Um, so there is some confusion for for um, Larry Gorbachev because he's had um, no experience of lesbians before in his yeah. entire goddamn life. Yeah. He's. All, all, all this is is an obstacle, kind of like, kind of like a missing step on the route to a box of five chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Larry Gormangast offers her a place in his bed to sleep. Yes, but she, he, they've got to just be there as friends. Yeah, you know, there's going to be no commingling of, yeah. ad, of any sorts. He, he tries to come onto her after doing some flexing in front of a mirror, some which posturing. unfortunately removes all plausible deniability that Ben Affleck did not realize what his face was doing during this film. Um, jigs up jigs up I'm afraid <laughs> and he yeah he fails to um, seduce mm. Ms. Lopez so maybe he could do it in the sequel uh, G- uh, Giggly 2 the jigs up <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh Christ okay so they wake up in the morning and there's a knock upon the door who is it well it's the best fucking part of this movie knocking trying to get into the house <laughs> Um, it is in fact Christopher Walken playing mm. Detective Christopher Walken who has... fills the room like a poisonous gas. Yes. <laughs> like a beautiful source of light in a dark, horrible cave. Man, you know what I'd love to do right now? Go down to Marie Callender's. Get me a big bowl. Pie. Some ice cream on it. Mmm, good. Put some on your head. Your tongue would slap your brains out trying to get to it. Interested? Um, he enters in and se- and basically summarizes the plot and reveals mm-hmm. to the characters, um, to Jennifer Lopez and Larry Germany, that <laughs> they are they have in fact that somehow mm-hmm. oh they hide away Brian by the way he doesn't see Brian somehow the brother of an influential district attorney yeah he's a big law guy I think big is, law is guy thing, is yeah. what he says yeah um has been kidnapped the, br- the younger brother of that man yes has been kidnapped uh presumably as a form of intimidation because he's taking part in a big trial of Al Pacino. And then Martin he... Brest wanted to just have him come in, get into a very tight close-up with Jennifer mm. Lopez and Ben Affleck, like everyone else who talks to them, and then just stay in that close-up. But they just couldn't contain Christopher Walken within... No, he'd within had a the... mark on that room. He yeah. was, uh, he'd was he been planning to fuck it <laughs> for a <laughs> long, long time. With his acting. Yeah. <laughs> and he brought a styrofoam cup with him that nobody gave him. <laughs> and halfway through the monologue, he very carefully folds the cup in half. Menacingly. Having trouble imaging it? Me too, and I <laughs> saw it. <laughs> Paul, what's the next thing that happens in this movie? I have forgotten. So Larry Flatley of uh, <laughs> Riverdance. Yeah. He then goes has to go and see his mum for some reason. Yeah. So he, go, he, he goes to see his mum because mum. Yeah, because and... we need a um, Italian-American stereotype in yep. the movie. And she is fantastic for that. Yeah. Um, she has a big old monologue to herself about lesbians. And well, she has a nice bonding moment with Je- Jen- Jennifer Lopez. She has a bonding moment how... at Jennifer Lopez. At Lopez. 
um, about how great lesbianism is and how guys sometimes just don't quite match up. And yeah. yet, in spite of that, wouldn't it be neat if you married my son because yeah. I'm a stereotypical Italian American yeah. mum? And then um, after that, uh, J Lo does some yoga. Yes, with Larry Geisler looking onwards. Yes, uh, Larry Garcia has a big old thing again about how great penises are, and oh. he and and he speaks very straightly about penises. Very straightly indeed yeah. about um, how evolution has led for women to just be satisfied by penises and yeah. nothing else. Yeah. At which point it's time for um, spoken word essay number thirty-two of the film. Yes. If it's design you're concerned with, hidden meanings, symbolism, and power, there is no place nowhere that has been the object of more ambitions, more battles, than the sweet, sacred mystery between a woman's legs that I am proud to call my pussy. Very clever. It's not based on much, but it is a thing. And we heard it. <laughs> it was said. And it was erotic because she was stretching about whilst talking about it? Yes. Despite the fact it def- definitely sounded like it was written by a 60-year-old white man yes. in a very hot office. <laughs> I don't know why I <laughs> <can tell. laughs> I just could. Um, but it doesn't matter as long as you get a lady to, to crab walk uh, whilst delivering it. It doesn't work for every film. No. Um, the la- it cannot be a little girl who is puking green slime all about the room. <laughs> that no, doesn't you, work. So wait, if you had a girl... Are you telling me that if I had Jennifer Lopez performing yoga whilst reading dialogue from The Exorcist, it would not be erotic? The um, power of Christ compels you. No, no. It's the Your opposite. Your mother sucks cocks in hell. <laughs> what is in downward dog? <laughs> no, it's it's the com- it's the complete opposite of that. It's um <laughs> it's it's Linda Blair talking about the sensuality of uh, vaginas <laughs> and mouths whilst crab walking down the stairs and spewing green slime all over the place. I see. Yes. Sorry. I have that image now. Yes. <laughs> Jennifer um It's like an appealing pair of lips <laughs> welcoming. <laughs> la, 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 la. Yeah. Your mother sucks cocks in hell. They do another scene. Now, this is a big scene. Oh. Because Lewis... Oh, I better pay attention then. Lewis gets in touch. He's got a big old face on, and he wants us to listen to it. He opens his mouth, and out comes the following directive. It's cut off Brian's thumb! What? But he's love. Okay, we should probably have pointed out that they've been bonding with Brian during this time. No, they can't cut off his thumb. It's lovable yeah. Brian. Yeah. Oh, it's Brian. All that bonding we did. He shouts at people for no reason. Yeah. Well, you fucking retard. Ah, oh, you're not, you're not one, really. That's that's the extent of the yeah. Bonding. That's that's how lovely Ben Affleck is to this particular yeah. man with learning disabilities. What a, one, what a wonderful man Larry Giggly is. You fucking idiot! I love you. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, remember how I said that um, Jennifer Lopez was a lesbian? Lesbian. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And like, she that means that she's got a girlfriend. Wait, what? Yeah. Co- no. Is, yeah. Come on. That's what that means. Look it up. I looked it up in a dictionary. You're jo- Google it. Don't Google it. Don't. You'll get... It's too late. Fuck! <laughs> Yo, you're in cahoots. I know it. <laughs> I think I think I, I see where you're coming from, even yes. if I don't believe the concept. Fair enough. She has a girlfriend. Yeah. Um, and she shows up wondering where she's been all this time. Uh, and uh, Fucking angrily. Angrily barges into the room like yeah. an angry woman would. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know how irrational they like, can Hell yeah. hath no fury like a lesbian scorn. Absolutely. And she comes in and she's all furious. And the scenes, yeah. I don't know, it's going along. It's kind of aggressive, but it's also kind of upbeat. Yeah. It's kind of chir- chirpy. And yeah, like, tension like, starts hey, to peter fuck out. You. Yeah, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, uh, fuck you. Uh, fuck you. There's a good dynamic going on. Yeah, there's a bit of back and forth. Yeah. Um, anyway, she leaves the scene uh, by cutting her wrists. Yes. She goes over to the sink, grabs a knife and cuts her wrist. Yes. In a long shot. It doesn't even look like it's happening till it's happened. No, to the yeah, to the point where I was expecting it to be a ruse. Yeah, it was um horrifying. But, yeah. And confusing. I was still getting to grips with the two ladies thing. <laughs> It's It's not on. It's a big idea. I think it's going to catch on. It's a big word for a big idea, and I'm scared, and uh, I just hope that Theresa May can lead us to glory in 2020. (laughs) And make things right again. Yeah. But uh, luckily for us, this bloody lesbian was so bloody useless, like a woman always is, that she couldn't (laughs) even kill herself properly. I think we could legitimately complain about the movie about she didn't manage to kill herself properly. (laughs) Oh, she, typical stereotyping. Look, if she wanted to kill herself, she'd have killed yeah. herself. Movie. J Lo is sort of seeing to uh, the fallen partner mm-hmm. in the hospital, evidently in sight of the car park, which is where they keep the suicide victims. Where, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that um, Larry Gronchy, 
<laughs> can sort of overlook the situation and um, uh, speculate, uh, just comment on how beautiful Jennifer Lopez is as she's um, desperately trying to reassure her um, suicidal ex-lover. Yes. I mean, she's hot when she does that. So she she comes out and is like, so just to be clear, I know we got interrupted. You don't want to cut off his thumb, right? And no, I don't want to cut off his thumb. I don't believe you. You've <laughs> got to really tell me that you don't want to cut off his thumb. Dude, I really don't want to yeah. cut off his <laughs> thumb. It's fine. I'm t- you can take my word for it on yes. this. Okay. Okay. It's all right this time. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. But next time, don't be so bloody cavalier with your responses, Mr. Cool Pants. <laughs> um, so, so Larry Gogarten yeah. and um, Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> knew that was That's that happen. now. Yeah. Jennifer Lopez. Um, the, the more relevant contemporary Jennifer. <laughs> There's only room for one at a time. <laughs> only one. Yeah. They sneak into um, the morgue yeah. to cut off a thumb to send that instead. Yeah. Easily enough. No yeah. logical problem with that. Nope. All, all, all good. Crimes are good. So they um, do that. They post it off. Yeah. Oh, they ha- they go to the stationery store um, where there's a rather attractive lady. Yes. At the till. Mm-hmm. And she gives uh, Jennifer Lopez a bit of the eye. You know what I mean? A bit mean? of the old sex yeah, eye. A bit of the old sex eye. And Larry Gaiman doesn't like that. No, Larry Glitter is furious. <laughs> and, and and we see exactly how much in the next scene. Because um, he goes on a big old monologue. He does yeah. a monologue at the world this time about how unlucky he is to get some sort of naughty feelings for a lesbian. Yeah. When and the that's... lesbian just isn't going to touch it. Yeah. It's, she's not even going to get near it. No. And that's terrible. Like, how, how could she have her own preferences and, like, her own... Life t- lifestyle decision that she's probably arrived at after a great deal of introspection and yeah you know to consideration you know and it's just it's really inconvenience has been Affleck because he's got such a hard on I know when was the last time she properly considered Larry Studio Ghibli's feelings <laughs> <laughs> J Lo takes so much pity on him in the in the next scene she uh, awkwardly and oh, what's 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 the word um, she very- clinically proposes some good platonic sex yes she very awkwardly comes on to larry's sovereign state of ghana and <laughs> sorry, and suggests that he should perform all sex <laughs> upon her yes it's turkey time huh gobble gobble um and tell us uh, you know don't do it like a bloody man yeah and even you know admits a little bit of nervousness because it's like hey i've been thinking and maybe women do have an advantage in this particular area and maybe yeah. i'm not too confident about the whole shut up and just do it just just do it for the love of christ stop monologuing <laughs> please that's the only reason she's having sex with him it's just maybe if i get his mouth busy doing something else he'll stop fucking talking gobble gobble Gobble, gobble. Yeah, which makes me think of like a good old stuffed turkey and there's nothing more erotic than yeah. giblets. <laughs> yeah. So Larry Giblets has sex <laughs> with Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. He um, flexes his waddle. His waddle. Oh, fuck. He and, flexes his waddle. <laughs> Excellent. And um, yeah, they they have very emotional sex. It's yep. close emotional sex that completely matches the, the precursor to that scene. Yeah, the only thing that betrays... that um, The only thing stronger than the music playing to accompany this scene is the vacant dead look in Ben Affleck's eyes. It's the most erotic thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> that is the best scene! It is the absolute <laughs> best best scene. It's very slow motion. It's very Nana Sherry, seven seconds. Um, and <laughs> then we're missing. in girl on top position. I can't remember. I haven't, I, I haven't done it in a while. Um, <laughs> I think that's called The Postman. Ah right, okay. Because I don't, I, I say them every time I do them in 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 in, in, in sex. Come on, I, sweetie, let's do the postman. Yeah, in, in my the mind, postman outside is like, <laughs> um, and then yeah, she's doing the on top uh, sex on him, the top one, and and his his face, it it just <laughs> genuinely looks like his soul is in the middle of sort of escaping. I mean, it was Bill Bailey who said that Ben Affleck always has the expression of a man who may have left the gas on, <laughs> and that is. I mean, that's unfortunately th- accurate. This is a guy who's uh, who's been breathing in the gas all night. <laughs> He's now lost control of his facial muscles. <laughs> after, and after that, they're they're lying in each other's arms. He's with in her in, arms with I him think. in the female position. Yes, in the traditionally female position, someone might assert who isn't who isn't quite so heteronormative. Yeah, you might say that's a um, nice subtle bit of imagery there in the film. Yes, absolutely. And then Jennifer Lopez says, "I am still a lesbian." Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. I apologise for that, my uh, gen- my decision. 
about that, which is definitely a choice. Yes, and but- Larry Gutrot goes, oh, oh, damn. The next morning, the crime story comes back, yep. unfortunately, and um, Larry Gilbert Gottfried has to escort... No, what happens now? Uh, like, um, what's his name called? He has to, meeting, right? Yeah, he meets with Lewis. Yeah, Lewis and, uh, pulls up in his car yeah. with his all of his expression with a great face. I'll, ma- takes, I'll make it the image for this uh, for this week's podcast. It takes four minutes for this face to get into view <laughs> because it's there's so much going on with it. It precedes even his reputation into the room, <laughs> um, and he informs. Um, oh fuck! I had one. He informs <laughs> Larry Gili. <laughs> fuck um that he has a visitor from new york new york uh, yeah from right oh, from boy. new york and uh so they go to Get your ass down here we're gonna talk about yeah. some business we're gonna find out exactly who's walking here talk about business yeah so they go in and it's fucking al pacino oh i love al pacino yeah. from the scarface it's from scarface oh, um so he's so disgusting. so he's in the He's in this film too, I think, because he owes Martin Brest something. Yeah. And um, he has a ponytail. Oh. So the next scene... No, wait. No, I remember now. There was a monologue. Oh, yes. There was a very long monologue about... Where Al Pacino's character convinces the whole audience that he's learned something from a book. He gives (laughs) us a very long monologue about something he's learned. A learned thing. Yeah. Kind of like a pop culture reference that you might get in a in a script by a certain man and then he shoots uh lewis in the head he shoots lewis in the head and then he um and then he continues the monologue <laughs> pointing out that that thumb you sent did have a thumb print on the end of it yes al pacino is definitely going to shoot the pair of them yeah for being nincompoops and jennifer lopez rather than uh, have Larry Glary, the Gary Gary man, yeah. be a man about it. Yeah. Jennifer Lopez reasons with him like yes. a woman would, and she, only a woman. <laughs> she does um, another one of the monologues that yeah. we've become so accustomed to and enjoy mm-hmm. so much in the film. Um, I can't remember what she said. It's not important. The upshot <laughs> is that they get to leave, and he's convinced. Yeah. Yeah. So they do. End yeah. of that story. But they decide they're going to let the kid go. Go. They're going to let Sam free. They go and leave him on a beach where they're filming an MTV <laughs> Baywatchy kind of thing. Yes, the Baywatch um, that he referred to throughout the film that we forgot to continue to mention yeah. because it wasn't that important. Which was obviously the beach, but nobody sort of seemed Put to together. figure it out. Yeah. yeah, Larry Gladstone and Jennifer Lopez have a final conversation where um, it is intimated that if Jennifer Lopez should ever become not a lesbian, yeah, his cock will always be there <laughs> and stiff and manly. I won't take off the condom until you get back to me. That's the grossest thing I've ever heard. Please don't do that. It's too late. <laughs> you may be even more of a lesbian. Well done. <laughs> um, and she goes off, but it's okay because then Jennifer Lopez shows up in a, in in the car that Larry Giggly gave her and uh, says, "Come with me." Oh, great. Well, that's good. I was then, worried there would be some sort of downer ending there. Nope. Few. It's all it's all uh, the way it should be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with a lesbian finally turned straight. Uh, <laughs> Once could, and for all, we can only be grateful that it, this time it wasn't done with a sword shaped like a cock yes surely our films are getting more and more progressive so paul what did you make of gandhi <laughs> the musical <laughs> the musical <laughs> um had some nice ideas Ooh, it had some i i dare i say it progressive ideas <gasps> also some not yeah definitely i mean we all know that sexuality is very very fluid yes appropriately so mm-hmm. and basically if a girl isn't having sex with you because you're a man mm-hmm. you're not really trying hard enough basically i mean that's that, that, i mean i think we can all accept that i mean just put a bit more effort in maybe learn something about yourself okay when we talk about progressive ideas uh... there was there was there was one uh that i, <laughs> ma- I made a note of um, okay because uh i guess because it was uh, such a special occasion <laughs> um they had um monologues at each other halfway through the film about uh-huh. how it's okay for guy- guys to cry yeah. and to be sensitive and get in touch with your feminine side and yeah the, that, a lot of it of was thing. the idea that ben affleck's trapped in a sort of masculine identity that he had to overthrow and overcome in order to be rewarded with a lesbian <laughs> it, the idea is that he's also unhappy in that position i'm not sure of how successfully that came across but the idea is that he's not happy being that bore yes some progressive ideas about masculinity yes and also disability and sex yeah, you know, guy's disabled doesn't mean he's sexless. He no, has to have sex. 
good stuff. It's, no, he's it, not just an innocent, perfect child. He no, exactly. Wants it, to burn down, and that's fine. He should. Yeah, it's 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 all there, and um, the only problem is it is sort of it is like they're, they're monologues like pinned to the cushion of this film. <sighs> yeah, and they're they're just there on the outside, like hanging, like just floating about in the wind. But but it just leaves this really like obtuse film. The film beyond the monologues has nothing to offer, does it? It doesn't. No. It, it, it doesn't give us anything apart from what it tells us loudly. It felt felt like a very studenty script, is the thing. Mm. Because mm. the thing is, the way people speak. Okay, I have to be a little um, self-aware here, and as much as this kind of is how I speak, a lot of the stuff I say it does come down to a series of monologues that I've prepared in advance of seeing someone. Yeah, true. But if you were in a film, nobody would believe you. No, I'm I'm entirely implausible as an actual human being. Yeah. So various characters had to like. Just espouse some dialogue about a thing that they knew, mm. and it was very Tarantino, I think. Because yeah. we all know the end of Kill Bill, the speech about Superman. We all know what a whopper is called in France. Yes. We all know like about how a foot rub is actually quite an intimate thing to do. Yeah. And we know about what was the one in Reservoir Dogs? There was a couple. Oh, we all know about not tipping. Yeah, exactly. He puts things in his movies, little speeches, you know, which were very new and clever at the time. Mm. And they fleshed out the characters a bit by making them seem like, okay, they think about stuff that's not just the plot of the movie. Yes. But my God, does it get tiresome when you have a whole movie of them. It's like if Tarantino was adapted for the stage. I think <laughs> yeah. because, because it's all monologues that must read very well. Kind of like Closer or something like that, where everybody's got something very big and grand to say. And yeah. It's very slick. It's not not the, the 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 delivery in this is particularly slick, but it's the same. It's the yeah. same. Yeah, it's the, the the same sort of thing. It's like memorable lines. Mm. I remember a lot of the lines. They don't really mean anything. They're not character moments. They're not like they're not interactions between people where we learn something about them. In having characters so unopposed in terms of personality, because they're all just you know kind of New Yorker types who speak mm. who talk a lot. Yeah, they're all you walking know. here. Yeah, they're all walking here. It's like one of them is walking here. You know, it's just <laughs> none of them have distinct personalities and so when yeah. they all just start spouting off about fucking w- w- what's so great about vaginas and like mm. um thumbs that's it thumbs and about how important thumbs are it just it's so blunt because it's cinema it's about visuals and it's yeah. about nuances and acting and things that you don't put in the script this yeah. is what this is a really difficult thing for a screenwriter to do and i i think maybe it's problematic when you have the same writer and director because the direct when it is yep. that situation as this is a director comes in with a fresh set of eyes and says okay the screenwriter has written a screenplay a screenplay yep. is not a movie a screenplay is a script and screenplays can often rely too heavily on dialogue because mm-hmm. that is the sort of main weapon of the screenplay the main weapon of the film is the visuals and the way that visuals and music pair together yeah i mean this is very much a case of purple prose isn't it oh, i think God, yeah. i mean your darlings Martin yeah Brest. let's talk a little bit about studio interference right because there was some okay we've addressed kind of heavily what martin Brest did wrong which is to just write a very wordy script um unfortunately this he wrote quite a dark movie apparently mm. it was 160 minutes long and the yeah. rate of the monologues in this it's hard to imagine that much but the trailer betrays some of the stuff that was cut such as more conversations with the mother and a lot yeah. more involvement from christopher walken which would not have been yeah. a bad thing. Um, test audiences didn't like it. And the feedback came, okay, pare it down, make it shorter, and make it a rom-com because what people want to see is Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez because they've just become an item. And people want to see that on the big screen and that's how we'll pull them in. Yeah. So I, reshoots happened and we don't <laughs> know what the reshoots were. It seems likely considering that the film tested poorly for being too dark and that Benefer was suddenly a big thing that it was to emphasize the romantic angle. Maybe even the turkey scene got added at this stage. Although, Ain't It Called News early on posted a review before the edits saying it was the worst movie ever made. So there must have been some substantially poor stuff in there. Yeah, I don't think this is one of those instances of the studio coming in and tearing up a perfectly good film. I no, think we see that in the film. The, 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 the monologues weren't you added. Know, they weren't <laughs> added post-production. Uh, they want more monologues. They, they've spoken. <laughs> We like that Tarantino guy. <laughs> Put one... in something about breakfast cereals. <laughs> one kid seems to love the monologue, man. <laughs> okay, now let's get to the music. Yeah. What okay. the fuck was happening here with this music? Music. 
I think we knew exactly what was happening because <laughs> the, the, the music was telling us exactly the emotion that we needed to be feeling. <laughs> that this uh, is a sparkly live action Disney adventure. <laughs> yeah. And it, yeah, it wasn't always as simple as here's a moody brooding bit of music for a dark bit. It no, was, not at all. Um, it would have been good if it stayed that simple. Yeah, it would have been really, really nice. But there were some <laughs> nasty scenes of Ben Affleck uh, physically intimidating Justin Bartha with some sort of funky, cool... Yeah, it, it's like they didn't want to risk the idea of, oh God, is that is that man? Is that national heartthrob Ben Affleck threatening a disabled man? And it's like the movie had to be like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. That's not what's happening. Um, it's a joke. Yeah, I guess. Laugh. Look, he just hit him. Yeah. <laughs> um, the about the only bit of music that was on point was the uh, was the sex scene because that was sex music. <laughs> that was sex music. Yeah, that's the music I put on. Now that was what I call sex music. Forty. <laughs> Jesus, there's been a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it's 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 just baffling. Like just it's doing all the emotional lifting in the same way that a really really shit delivery guy who brings in your pizza yeah. blinks and then just walks out with it again. <laughs> oh my pepperonis! <laughs> Where are you going with my emotion? <laughs> Come back! I was enjoying that moment. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> so what was this meant to be what 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 did everyone sign up for was it a dark crime comedy is that what got jennifer lopez the sort of pop sensation and star of the cell star of the cell show and star of out of sight so she made some was she just looking for risky decisions and she appeared in something that was unfortunately later retcon to be fluff to be glitter because <laughs> i will say on the disc, there were adverts for Made in Manhattan and Anaconda, both Jennifer Lopez movies. Mm. She ha- She's different in this. Her assertiveness is mm. very different from some of her other roles. And she's yeah. pretty... I, I don't doubt her in it. I no, don't ever it, think, you know, oh, that's an act she's putting on. I mean, it's like, I, this is a... Uh, you know, I, I believe this is a real, incredibly implausible and slightly annoying person. There's a lot of her character has a lot of attitude, and um, yeah. it's it's a strong it's a strong female character for the most part yeah. until she changes her mind and takes Ben Affleck into a bed. But there's <laughs> but there's also there is also this message about you know about femininity. Yeah, and and the number of times that the whole point was Ben Affleck shut up and listen to her. Yeah, and the things that she has to say. Yeah. And you'll learn stuff about the world and things. Yeah, and I mean, because he's a fucking idiot in the yeah, film. He sure he's is. He's a total just goober. Yeah. I am the fucking sultan of slick, Sadie. I am the rule of fucking cool. You want to be a gangster? You want to be a thug? You sit at my fucking feet. Larry Goober. <laughs> Larry Goober returns <laughs> in uh, Larry Goober, the film. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, it's just, like I said, it's just pinned to the outside of it. It's like mm. the tail on the donkey. And what is the donkey, though? Where is the donkey? What is the donkey? What is the meat of this fucking movie? If it's well, not it's that? it's it's nothing. They forgot to draw the donkey <laughs> on. All of the messages in the tail. The tail has feminism written on it, and um and they're just pinning it onto an empty uh, corkboard. Yeah, there's the message is there, but it's in monologues. It's just being hammered into our stupid faces, and it's particularly bad since the actions of the characters don't necessarily support it. I mean, what no. is the most feminized thing that Ben Affleck really does in the movie through his actions? Not cut a disabled man's up thumb off. Yeah, goes down on Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, bravo. That's a, you know, extraordinary. Only a woman would have that kind of sensitivity to not cut, just maim a disabled person because he'd been told to by yeah. someone he doesn't even like. Yeah, pansy. Yeah, and then he goes but, down on Jennifer Lopez, the peak of his character <laughs> arc. But it, it, it means that, like, character moments yeah. just feel really... Well, they just feel really fucking forced. It's like yeah. when... um, So Justin Barthes' character is going on about the Baywatch. And Ben Affleck... G- Gagley is 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 going. No, you're not going the fucking Baywatch, whatever the fuck that is. Get the fuck out, you know. Get the fuck away from get me. Back in your box. Yeah. Justin Bath is kind of freaking out. Um, yeah. He doesn't want to be in the film anymore. <laughs> um, Jesus, and, let me out. And um, Larry Gogley says, um, "Well, how are you going to go to the Baywatch tomorrow if you go home?" Yeah. And it's a nice beat because it yeah. it, it it placates Brian. I can't just yeah. keep saying Justin Bartha. Yeah. Um, and it's Brian. like, oh. That was a sort of a sliver of understanding there. That was like a, a like a human empathy moment, and uh, that was about the only one that we we saw in the film. Because because <laughs> it's all well and good to have those 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 moments where yeah. suddenly you understand, but then it's it's just so jarring when the rest of it is like I'm a I'm a fucking one time offer, you know. I'm a I'm like <laughs> yeah. a, I'm like a fuck I'm a fucking specimen, and, and yeah. Well, I guess that's meant to be the sort of you know macho surroundings that he's imbued himself with, but we just don't. I think. 
I didn't know. I didn't absolutely know that he was a nice guy. I was told no. he was. Well, no, because there's no progression to his character in the film that we watched. <laughs> yeah. It's just uh, telling, not showing. Yeah. That's all it comes down to, really. For all our big words. Yeah. For all our big words. And I think the fact that the actors was made so immobile by the script is emphasized mm. by the cinematography, by the direction, by the same guy, because he locks his characters into these stagings, mm. where particularly the scene where... You've got the sort of uh, the lesbian lover comes in to confront Ben mm. Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, and um, they're just they're locked in. There's nowhere for them to move. There's yeah. no flexibility in the camera. They're just in a sort of tight shot that's emphasizing all of them, and it's it's claustrophobic. Mm. But it totally also means it's rather awkward. I can't help but think throughout that whole sequence, Ben, why don't you back up a step? Quick fire. Yeah, let's quick fire. Let's okay. see what else we can come up with. Um, I really like JLo's fashion in this, her nineties mm. fashion. Uh, obviously, the midriff was um, enjoyable, but um, that, more than yeah. that, she uh, there was a scene in the uh, diner before she threatens the Utes, mm. where she's wearing I think it was a red leather jacket. Mm-hmm. She's got orange sunglasses on. Yeah, um, I think jeans she was wearing, mm-hmm. like bright blue jeans. Sure, um, and it's just a cool look. I remember yeah. thinking, oh, she looks awesome, and boots. I mm. hear boots. Those boots were made for walking. They were made for Walken, but she wore them instead because yeah. the size was wrong. There's a very good pan out joke that I alluded to at the beginning with the narration when he's talking supposedly to camera. It pans out and the guy is stuffed into a tumble dryer. I thought that was a very good bit of directing and it made me laugh. I got a lot out of the stationery check. I don't want to just be remarking on how attractive <laughs> various women in this movie looked, but in addition to being attractive, she was very emotive. She had a lot of expressions going on in her one scene. There are a lot of muscles at work in that face. Yeah. Um, it was beguiling. <laughs> I like that it uh, spoke of a time where people's apartments just had the show Baywatch in them, ready to watch at any available <laughs> moment. Ben Affleck promises Justin Bartha that uh, if he shuts up, they'll go home and watch Baywatch. He's got it. Yeah. No one has that anymore. I Okay, for all the stereotyping of the mum, I hmm. liked her. I yeah. liked her bonding moment with Jennifer Lo- uh, Lopez over lesbianism. I liked mm. that she, without a word said about it, treated the guy with the learning disability with respect. She's nice. Nice lady. Uh, reading the back of the Tabasco bottle to send Justin Bartha to sleep. Yeah, that was on my list. I loved it. So yeah. uh, the setup is um, the kid wants, uh, Brian wants um, a story read to him. And it says, read me something. And it becomes obvious Ben Affleck does not have a book yep. anywhere in the apartment. Um, he reads the ingredients of a Tabasco sauce yeah. thing. Yeah. I enjoy it when he's trying to show off to Jennifer Lo- uh, mm. Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. Um, is that um, when he comes in and tries to seduce her, having just uh, spent some time in front of the mirror, mm. he's yawning and sort of flexing as he yawns to try and show off his muscles. <laughs> and I enjoyed that. It was very lame. Excellent. In the exact same scene, my next point was yeah. her um, like amused pity face. As he was doing it, yeah. in in the background, um, it was it was very sweet and just, yeah, her amusement was great. All right, I'm, I'm going to come back and just say I really did like Jennifer Lopez in this movie. I think she was gave a pretty good performance, if not necessarily the most varied and like diverse. She gave a good performance as a sort of strong-minded woman. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely didn't deserve the worst actress uh, awards oh, for the Razzies. That's mean. Fuck yeah. That. Uh, the very end when they when they do say goodbye before uh-huh. that before they unsay goodbye and drive <laughs> off into the distance, um, she kisses him mid sentence. She looks distraught as she does it, and he doesn't even kiss her. Like his brain broke, like just from the sadness uh-huh. of it all. Um, it felt really real. Cool. Okay, so finally, as a sign off for this, I want to just talk very briefly about a young man called Lenny uh, Venito. Lenny Venito played Lewis in this movie. Mm-hmm. And added some pretty extraordinary flourishes here and there, um, largely through facial expressions. After being murdered by Al Pacino, he settles in on the couch. <laughs> and Al Pacino flops next to him, and the frame just about picks him up on the side of the on the side of the frame. And the expression he has died in <laughs> is blissful. It's just I don't know how to describe it to you. It's a grimace. Yeah, mouth agape. Mouth agape. Blood trickling down the face. Yeah. It's 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 it has to be seen to be believed. With without a doubt. That this that that would be the I think that would be the one good thing in Citizen Kane. <laughs> if it's if they just snuck it in for a frame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's just about it for um Goggly. Now let's move on to the one better thing. 
the one better thing. My one better thing is a little movie by the name of In Bruges. It is Martin McDonough's um, 2008 crime film. And I think of all the movies that try to sort of run with the dark comedy thing that Tarantino started, things like, um, you know, Heads in a Duffel Bag, the whole nine yards, whole ten yards, comedy mafia movies, analyze this and analyze that, all of these things. It was it really run out of steam and energy by the time it got to um, Gigli, uh, to the point where someone might think, oh, well, that's that thoroughly beaten to death. Then In Bruges came along a couple of years later, and it's funny and dark mm-hmm. as hell, um, but never feeling inappropriate. It'll cover things like suicide and child murder, yeah. and yet throughout the whole thing, because of this wonderful pervasive atmosphere, it even has slightly sing-songy music. Thinking about it, like it's, it's strange, but by, by by sort of cultivating the atmosphere very carefully, Martin McDonough is able to make a movie that is funny and dark as fuck. Things like cocaine-fueled parties with aggressive midgets, insulting American tourists, mm-hmm. um, and then later on them dying. Yeah. Um just dark shit, but it's so funny and it's um Colin Farrell's one of his finest performances. Without a doubt. He's extraordinary in the movie, as mm-hmm. is Brandon Gleason, and also um we get a good villain Ben Kingsley style performance from oh, Ray Fines. There's uh, um yeah, there's, there's a like symbiosis there, I think, between mm-hmm. the, the the light and the dark. It they feed off one another and it's yeah, you, the can't, darker you can't have it gets, one without the other. The funnier it gets yeah. and the funnier it is, the sort of darker, the, the, the more dark the dark things are because yeah. of how funny it is. Two manky hookers <laughs> and a racist dwarf. <laughs> That's yeah. why you should watch. <laughs> it's the Irishness that wins it. It's the sort yeah. of charm of the Irish that sneaks in. So it's like, oh, there's such a bunch of lads yeah. with their <laughs> murdering children. One of my One of my favourite films. Really great. Yeah. Yeah. In, in in the same sort of vein uh, as Gili with uh, two characters coming together against all odds, I would like to talk about The Town, yeah. uh, which is uh, the Ben Affleck directed uh, film uh, <laughs> adapted from Chuck Hogan's novel Prince of Thieves. Mm. Um, both very, very good. Uh, you should definitely read Prince of Thieves if you haven't. Okay, so the film the film itself um, is Ben Affleck uh, casting Ben Affleck as he does <laughs> playing um, Ben Affleck. Yeah, he plays a longtime thief called Ben Affleck who tries to balance <laughs> his feelings for a bank manager connected to one of his earlier heists, as well as the FBI agent looking to bring him and his crew down. Uh, um, it has this uh, this this crazy they could never in real life really kind of <laughs> relationship, but it has some thick thick tree trunk thick tension in it especially Um, when um jeremy renner's terrifying character shows up in a scene this is how you do a crime film with some laughs and some heart yeah properly yep and that is how you do the one better thing the one better thing thank you for listening to one good thing yes thank you to avoid being hated uh maybe next time you recommend a film so bad it sucks in other films and gives birth to them uh we are on uh twitter facebook youtube stitcher OGT pods. Donna f- Blitzen. D- stinky. Yep. Goulash. <laughs> he was a dwarf, wasn't Borstal? he? Yeah. <laughs> Borstal? Borstal boy, smack pony. Uh, <laughs> and little G. <laughs> he was my favourite. But if you do want to recommend anything or if you have anything to say, uh, you can get in touch via email. Please uh, do. OGT pod at gmail.com. A uh, quick reminder that my novel Dockhead is available in paperback on Amazon. Uh, thanks to everyone who's bought a copy so far and uh, and tweeted about it, including Joe Lambert at Joey Squibb, uh, Jen Blundell, uh, shite film recommender extraordinaire uh, <laughs> at Jen Blundell, and Matthew Whitaker from Cinema Bushido. Ah. Uh, thanks so much. You are amazing. Uh, anyone else who buys a copy, just tweet me and let me know and, well, I'll be really nice about it. Oh. And speaking of Cinema Bushido, we uh, were invited onto their stylish podcast lawn oh. to talk Sonny Chiba's the street fighter yeah we were so if you haven't checked that out well bloody do go on you yeah. waiting for yeah. our permission well yeah. you've got it please do <laughs> meanwhile i have been brought on by screen mayhem as their sort of uh, mm. regular film reviewer slash article writer so go there check me out i've just put up a review of uh, valerian and the planet of a thousand worlds nope City of a Thousand Planets. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. God, I reviewed it so hard. Um, And also an article about The Beguiled and how it Mm. stacks up, how Sophia Coppola's efforts stack up against Don Siegel's. I've I've read it. Uh, I've read both of them. Mm. A lot of insight. Uh, Very beguiling. 
Oh, you. <laughs> the Valerian one was. And the Beguiled <laughs> one was very Thousand Planets. Yeah. So... <laughs> Yes, excellent. Um, follow Cinema Bushido if you haven't already. Follow yep. Screen Mayhem if Please you haven't do. already. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. I'm Paul Sold. I'm Paul Goodman. Remember, the one good thing about Gili is the hilarious expression on the face of a man who's been brutally shot in the face. Yeah.